Hi, um, my name is Karen Singmaster. I'm the chair of the Department of Chemistry. I'm unable to um, hold a live Zoom session for Admitted Students Day because I have to go down to um, San Diego for a meeting of the Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation Program. So I've recorded this video to sort of give you an overview of the chemistry department. So if you don't mind, I am going to share a screen with you. Um, just so you're aware, I have been at San Jose State for 34 years. Um, I manage the general chemistry programs and um, I run a program called the Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation. And I got my bachelor's degree a long, long time ago at the University of Puerto Rico in the Caribbean and my PhD from UC Berkeley. So let me share a screen here. Take me a minute to get there. Let me scroll up. Okay. So you should be seeing a screen that says Department of Chemistry, San Jose State University, Duncan Hall 518. So our department office is located in Duncan Hall 518. We are part of the College of Science at San Jose State University, not part of the College of Engineering. There's a College of Engineering that's separate. We have a website where you can go search for information and um, you know stories about the department and all that. Um, and our office is in Duncan Hall on the fifth floor, room 18. That's where our general chemistry labs are in our stock rooms. But be aware that we are um, spread out quite a bit. We currently have space in the sixth floor, fifth floor, fourth floor of Duncan Hall, as well as a lot of space in the basement. And then currently, our organic chemistry labs are located about a block away in um, a very old science building. But you're from a class, you're starting, the class is starting in fall 2022, will probably never have to use those organic chemistry labs because when you come to campus, you'll see that there's a very pretty, um, very tall new building being built next to Duncan Hall. And so you will probably be one of the first students to use the brand new organic chemistry labs in that building. Um, the biochemistry labs will also be in that building. And that building is 30 feet away from Duncan Hall. So at least we're moving closer to the rest of the department. So we have now two buildings that are very close to one another, rather than you know, walking a block to, for your organic chemistry class. Um, please do note that the science building still has the large lecture hall. So you might be in those large lecture halls taking um, Chem 1A, Chem 1B, and your organic chemistry lectures. Our department has 18 tenure, tenure track faculty for fall 2022 that could become 19. We have an offer out for a new biochemist. So hopefully by then we'll find out. We tend to oscillate around 300 undergraduate students and 20 master's students. We do not grant PhDs. Uh, we have five office and stockroom staff. It should be six. We should have a six person in the near future um, for the chem department office. Um, the degrees we grant are a BA in chemistry, a BS in chemistry, concentration biochemistry, and a BS in chemistry. And you will notice they're all 120 units, but they differ, and that should say, let me correct this. I'm trying to just correct it here. Real quick on the fly, that should say math 30, okay? So done there, clean up, okay? So um, they differ in how much math you have to take. So math 30 is Calc 1, math 30, 31 is Calc 1 and Calc 2, and then you have Calc 1, 2, and 3 required for the BS. They also differ in the level of physics, uh, the BA chemistry and the BS chemistry concentration biochemistry, allow you to take the non-calculus based physics, whereas the uh, BS chemistry requires the three semesters of calculus based physics. Um, certain areas uh, allow you access to more coursework. So uh, physical chemistry in particular requires a lot of um, a physics background. So because of that, you'll find that that's the class most affected by the varying levels of chemistry of math and physics. So the 
two first majors take Chem 160, whereas the BS chemistry takes 161A, 161B, you should not be surprised if you see some chemical engineers with you in that class. Your electives are in biochemistry and in organic chemistry for the BA chemistry. Um, you can have electives in a variety of, you know, in biological sciences if you're a biochemist. And then the BS chemistry people, a lot of them take more math. So they have differential equations and then your algebra, they might take more physics or they might take biochem, um, which is not necessarily required for the degree. They'll take that as the elective. Um, what commonly happens is the BA chemistry majors are not particularly interested in being chemists for their careers. And so some of them go into a teaching credential to be a um, chemistry high school teacher. They might be interested in pharmacy school, um, medical school, uh, optometry school. Occasionally, some will go for a master's degree in chemistry. Um, the BS concentration biochemistry people often have all the coursework needed to go to, to an MD program. And so you will find that a lot of them also are interested in an MD degree. They're very likely to, if they're looking for work, to slowly end up at a pharmaceutical or a biotech company. Um, and then finally, the MS, PhD, uh, excuse me, the uh, BS chemistry majors, many of them are interested in continuing to an advanced degree in chemistry or might be working for companies that are more like Agilent, um, maybe a little less bio-oriented than the biochemists, so Agilent or um, surface science or material science, um, or that applied materials, excuse me. Um, we've had, we even have someone with an MS in chemistry from our department working at Apple. So you have some, you know, what opens up changes a little bit based on your degree program. Um, typically an incoming student, their first semester for sure will take the first semester of Gen Chem and for sure would take whatever math class they're ready to take based on the university's placement or placement test. Um, the placement might be based on your SAT or your ACT scores. Um, there could be English 1A, a first semester of English, or some sort of general education course like Science 1 or Communications 20 or something like that. But for sure, we want you in Gen Chem so that you can start towards your degree program in, a, in an efficient way. If your background in math or chemistry is poor, then it could be that you're put into Chem 30A, which is our introduction to chemistry. And you would then come back to take Chem 1A. The College of Science has an advising center. They're located in Duncan Hall 213. They provide tutoring and advising support. And so that's a good resource place to go find information about careers, about you know, peer mentoring, peer tutoring, anything you need to help support you in your coursework. Um, so, so the things we think are strengths about a program is we are very laboratory intense. Um, for our upper division classes, the courses tend to be smaller, but do be, be prepared for very large classes in general chemistry and possibly be even in organic chemistry. Um, some general chemistry classes make it to 300 students in the, in the lecture hall with the labs then being limited to about 24 to 28 students. Um, the, the general chemistry is so big and has multiple sections that are large because SJSU um, has other majors that require chemistry. So clearly biology, uh, physics, forensic science, uh, materials engineering, biomedical engineering. These are all degrees that require a full year of general chemistry. We even have kinesiology majors their degree doesn't require it, but physical therapy school does. Um, anyone who's a pre-med has to take general chemistry. So you'll find them, you'll find psychology majors and health majors in the class. So it's, it's a large group of students, okay? We always encourage students, particularly chemistry majors, to interact with the course lecture, make, you know, visit office hours, even if you don't need help just to introduce yourself so that you get to know the faculty in chemistry. Um, assuming your grades are, are good, your first or two semesters here, then students are strongly encouraged to get into a research opportunity with a faculty member early on. Um, 
That way you'll have extensive lab experience before graduating to add on to your laboratory coursework so you're better prepared for, um, you know, for, for whatever future path you want. Um, for spring 2020, when we were all in person before the pandemic, we usually had over 110 undergraduate students working in chemistry research labs. Um, we, we've had quite a few even during the pandemic because we were offering in-person labs and whenever possible, when the county would allow us, we would have students in lab doing research. Right now we're totally in person. And so almost every chemistry class with some rare exceptions like chemistry 120S, which is a safety course, and Chem 101, chemistry and the computer, all our classes are in person, the lectures, the labs, and the seminars. So our program is not online. And so if you're looking for, you know, taking your classes of chemistry online, that's not going to happen with us because we strongly believe in as much hands-on experience as possible. Uh, we don't grant PhDs like the UCs. We don't have many master's students that, like you saw at the beginning. So the faculty interact a lot with the undergraduate research students. So that's the reason we, we encourage chemistry majors to get into a research position soon so that they form a strong interaction with a faculty member and a group of students that you know, might make might assist them in, in providing support while going through your education at San Jose State. Um, we are sort of a medium sized department. Uh, so students better connect with faculty. If you look at biology, biology is over a thousand majors. So it's more difficult to connect there. So for example, if you need letters of rec for you know, medical school and all that, then probably a department that is smaller will get you more interactions with faculty. And so you might have more faculty capable of writing a strong letter of rec for you for pharmacy school, medical school, or whatever. We have a chemistry club. Um, that chemistry club sells lab manuals. Clearly, they haven't sold them since the pandemic started, but we expect them to be selling lab manuals in fall if everything goes well. And they sell safety glasses. They do that at a discount in terms of the faculty, in particular for Gen Chem, Chem 1A, 1B. We have our own in-house lab manual, and that way we're not buying one that's published by a big publishing company. And so the lab manual might be 15 to 20 bucks instead of $150, right? Um, they often sell, sell safety glasses um, for as little as $6. Um, they sponsor an annual dinner. Obviously, we've not had that during the pandemic, but we hope to get back to that. Um, and they have other events for students that are in the club and faculty. We are offering still academic excellence workshops. These are called Science One. And they're meant to be, you know, twice a week um, collaborative learning environment, particularly for Gen Chem and for organic chemistry. Um, and so we encourage chemistry majors to get in there uh, when they're taking, say, Chem 1A to take the Sci 1 workshop for Chem 1A so that they're able to um, uh, better, better adapt to college chemistry, I guess, and hopefully excel in college chemistry so that we can hire you in the department to be a tutor or mere, maybe peer connections can hire you. And so you have the opportunity to quickly turn your strong first year experience of chemistry into something that makes you a little bit of money because you're now well trained in some basic chemistry and can help your classmates. Um, we also have the opportunity to start science education coursework a little earlier. And so if you're interested in becoming a high school uh, teacher, then that science education coursework is relevant to maybe moving in a little faster into a career as a science teacher. My phone is ringing, so I apologize. Turn this off. <laughs> it happens. Okay. <laughs> um, and there's also some opportunities for jobs in the department. We have to hire a lot of proctors. We have to hire graders. Uh, we have to hire people for the stock room. So again, you know, students who excel in chemistry in their chemistry coursework can find not only research opportunities but even possibly some paid work with the department. Um, I'm going to type something here right now so as to make you aware of it. We have a Chem 1A preparation course. 
This is a Canvas course. So study, all right, that is meant to help you review high school chemistry. If you enroll in Chem 1A, the moment you show up enrolled in Chem 1A, I send out an email and I invite you to participate in this. So some of you might be enrolling, you know, as early as June when you come in for student orientation. And so the moment you're enrolling Chem 1A, you might get an email from me within a week saying, hey, we have a Chem 1A prep. And this is a great way to use your summer, um, you know, a couple of hours a week or maybe a day a week, depending on how much time you have, to just review high school chemistry so you're better prepared for Chem 1A. Things like remembering your ions, significant digits, remembering your elements, you know, balancing redox, all that is covered in that Chem 1A prep course. Um, the benefits of doing research with a faculty member are many. As I mentioned, letters of recommendation from someone who has seen you working as a chemist for several semesters is a good thing. Uh, whether you're looking for a job as a chemist or whether you're going to graduate school or a, a, a professional school like medical school. If someone knows you well, they're able to comment on your, you know, your, not only your intellectual ability and ability to problem solve, but medical school will ask things like, you know, are you honest? Are you ethical? Um, you know, they, they want us, they'll ask faculty, you know, would you want this student to be your MD when they're fully trained? So things like that enhance a letter of application, uh, a letter of support for a professional school or for a graduate program. It's work experience, so you learn to use and maintain scientific equipment because remember, we don't have graduate students, so a lot of our undergrads are comparable to graduate school students at a UC. You have a lot more responsibilities. You're not doing just dishware, you know, you're not cleaning glassware. Your project is your own. It's not a project that is part of a you know, postdoc and a graduate student and you're doing some little piece of it. You know, so you're working in groups, you're learning chemistry techniques, uh, you're collecting, maintaining, analyzing, presenting data. You might be preparing posters, doing oral presentations, get used to maybe possibly you know, reading publications. And if you're very fortunate being a co-author in a publication, it will enhance your critical thinking skills and it'll let you apply what you're learning in your classes, which sometimes um, students, when they're taking classes, don't, don't get it um, as much. And when they're going like, oh, wait, I did this in lab. Now I know why I did this in lab. Um, you know, in my research lab, in, in lecture, they explained to me how that would work. And look at this. This is how it works. This is cool. So we've had students that whose grades have gone up once they started doing research because they were able to find a purpose in, in sitting in class, which for some students, that's not the fun part. Um, we also, it also enhances your communication skills. So you can present at national meetings, local meetings. We, haven't ha we even have a College of Science Research Day. I believe our College of Science Research Day, sorry, I'm looking at a calendar here, is on May 6th. And so that would be an opportunity to come to campus if you're available. It's all underneath Duncan Hall. Um, so it's outside and you see students presenting their work. And in presenting their work, you can get it, you know, you can, new students can see what sort of research is going on. They can find out what sort of, you know, how, how hands-on their research advisor is, et cetera. Um, you get college credit. You can use, I believe, as many as three units of Chem 180 towards your 120 for the degree. I will let you know we have students that accumulate maybe as many as eight or nine research units because they started doing research at, in their freshman year, the second semester of their freshman year. We encourage you to first finish Chem 1A. Um, but we have had students who started in the summer before they started at SJSU working in a faculty member's lab. Um, getting maximum amount of research experience opens the door to going to a PhD program. So if you have strong grades and all this research experience, you don't have to do a master's degree first. So I personally do not have a master's degree. I did uh, two and a half to three years of research at the University of Puerto Rico. Uh, I even had an undergraduate thesis. 
and my work ended up as part of a publication from my research advisor. And so all that experience back then in the, you know, it was the early 1980s um, was uncommon for someone to have. And as such, a PhD program was quite interested in me just going straight into the program because I already knew um, the joys, the frustrations of how to do research. I knew a lot about the scientific method and how to process data and all that. And so it was like, it, it wasn't worth the effort having to get a master's first. Berkeley just wanted me in their PhD program. And that's what hap still happens. I will tell you that PhD programs in chemistry pay you. And so they pay you to be a lab instructor as well as work in a research lab. And so a PhD degree is also sort of the start of your career as a professional chemist because you're gaining more experience. Occasionally, but at least be aware it doesn't happen often, a faculty member might have a little extra money left from a grant or from some university grant or from some federal program. And they might be able to pay you a little bit for working in the summer if you have to be here in the summer or if you want to be here in the summer, or even during the semester, depending on how many hours you're putting in. Um, some of the companies that have hired our students are Thermo Fisher, Agilent, Nanosys, Genentech, and as I mentioned, we even have someone at Apple. Some of the PhD programs that have taken our students are Stanford, UC Davis, UCLA, so all the UCs typically. And um, for a while, we had a lot of students that went to the University of Wisconsin. It's, it's sort of a it's sort of whatever the students are doing, then everyone wants to do that. Um, and so we go through these, these different times where it's a certain school that everyone's picking. So University of Illinois took a few students from us five or six years ago. Many of them wanted to go to Illinois then. And right now it's University of Michigan. I think we have maybe about seven students now at the University of Michigan, particularly in biochemistry. And the University of Michigan seems to be very happy with them. So whenever our students apply to them, they, they offer admission. <laughs> um, we do have to remind students that Michigan does have very, very cold weather and snow. <laughs> so some of them are unprepared for that. Excuse me. If you want to explore careers in chemistry, you can visit the um, URL below. Yeah, below, sorry. Um, the ACS is the American Chemical Society. The American Chemical Society is the largest uh, scientific society in the world. Um, just understand it's the reason is that all chemists sort of hang out together, whereas biologists sort of tend to spread out into different categories. So there's microbiologists, and molecular biologists, and so they all don't all come together in one society. So that's what makes the ACS so large. And so their website is going to have a lot of content for um, undergraduate students, high school students, college students. And so I encourage you to, um, to just do a search through there so you can start finding opportunities if you're really interested in, in chemistry as a, as a career path. I will also mention coming back up here that the Chemistry Club is an affiliate of the American Chemical Society. And so through the Chemistry Club, you can join the ACS as a student I believe they charge like $28, but often the club will pick up the tab and just charge you five or something like that. And so then you have access to some of the, uh, like the chemical and engineering news magazine that can help you keep track. They'll send you some stuff associated with students in chemistry. And so you have the opportunity to just get immersed in that early on in your education. Um, I don't want to keep talking because it's just going to overwhelm you. I will probably, once I know, I mean, I shouldn't say once I know, once I get access to who, what students were admitted in chemistry, I will probably be sending this handout as a file. Um, and then the moment students are admitted into Chem 1A, I will send them the application to join the Chem 1A prep. Um, often it requires that you already be an SJSU student and have an SJSU ID because it's based on your ID that we add you. So inviting you to join the Chem 1A prep before you're enrolled or you have an ID, ID is difficult. But um, clearly the moment you have an ID, if you want me to add you to that course, just let me know. Uh, I'm not sure what else to say. So, <laughs> so you're welcome to email me to ask questions. Um, 
and we hope you join us here at San Jose State. Um, we think we have a very strong program. I think we believe we have a student-centered program, particularly because of all our involvement with student research. Um, and so we think it's a good choice if you're interested in, you know, the CSU system and living in San Jose. Thank you for your time. I wish you success in your last semester of high school. Goodbye.